enough money for um, the trip for Pastor. And um, so they look like you took care of him. You took care of his bills, and a lot of things got cheaper for him, which is a blessing. Thank you for all the people that are giving um, the best they have. And, Lord, and you see it. I pray, Lord, that you'll help us as we try to pay for um, and do more this year. And um, as I was talking to some people at church, just um, Brother Chris, actually, on Sunday, talking about all the things that we've seen improvement on in the church the last four years, and there's still much more we want to see done. So I pray you help us continue to give, and I pray with my, pa my family, give them back safety tonight. Be a pastor, give them safety back as well. Give us burning strength on the plane. And I pray bless the offer tonight. Just name it. Tonight for us, Joy. What song did you want to sing? Uh, yeah. uh, but the blood. Okay, what page is that? G66. All right. Pray that um, our our the our speakers up on this podium will keep the paper taped on the on the podium for Joy. We won't sing the same four songs. Keep the paper taped on the on the podium for Joy. We won't sing the same four songs every uh, every Sunday. <laughs> that's that's a task for him. It has not stayed on this on the podium. <laughs> What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Not used to singing um, at all. Uh, I, I don't know if I sing a congregational song in forever, so not, I'm always playing the instrument now, so it's, it feels good to sing. We'll say a prayer, and our brother Pantry is going to give special, and we'll get right to the sermon tonight. I know y'all happy, so... <laughs> We probably never start this early. I hope y'all um, mark, mark the time down. So 7.43 when the sermon started. <laughs> but um, thank you, God, for um, this, um, for the service tonight. Oh, God, I pray you be at Brother Pantry. Give him whatever song you lay on his heart for us to sing tonight. I pray you give him the strength to sing. And, and I pray, God, you give me the words to say that I be able to preach your word and also be able to live it myself. And I pray you bless the rest of the day. Amen. One of these morning, and it won't be long. You look for me, and I'll be gone. I'm going. 
coming to a place where there's nothing to do but just walk around having all day. When I get to heaven, I'll sing and shout. No one will be able to put me out. No, no, no. My mother, she will be waiting in my father to real joy and, and walk around heaven all day. When I get to heaven, I sing and shout. My mother and father will be waiting there too. Every day will be Sunday, my Lord. Sabbath will have no end. We won't do nothing but sing. God knows we'll pray. But when he say we're well done, our race has been won. I walk around, walk around, have been all day. Walk around heaven all day. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate all the prayers. Lord knows I'm not used to this at all. I prefer the Sun School class. <laughs> like no one can hear you, so just the little guys. But um, if you got your Bible, say we'll be in um. 1 Samuel chapter 13. I know Wednesday nights is more of a <clears throat> Bible study. You know, we've been studying in Nehemiah. So um, probably not much preaching, but more teaching, you know, something that we all have struggled with. Or maybe, to me, I will say one of the hardest things we struggle with for myself is what I want to talk about tonight is patience. That's what I want to talk to my patience. And, and in this story, you know, not only the Lord, it, you'll, when we read about this in the story, you'll learn about not only their signs of impatience, I'm going to hit that, too, you'll see the sins and what it actually caused of impatience, but then I don't, what, I don't want to leave y'all in the dumps, because we all struggle with it, I know I do, but there's also a solution, and God gives a direct solution exactly with verses and how to handle, how we can handle patience and be patient like he wants us to be. You know, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 13, if you have your Bibles, and we'll start off with um, verse 1. The Bible says, And Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him 3,000 men of Israel, whereof 2,000 were with Saul and Mishmash and in Mount Bethel, and 1,000 were in Jonathan and Gibeah of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Gibeah, and the Philistines heard it, and Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had spit in the garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel also, <clears throat> that Israel also was, um, had an, an abomination with the Philistines, and the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and the people were as the sand which is on the seashore in Motu, and they came up and pitched and mishmash and eastward from Beth Beth Avon. And when Israel, the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, 
Then the people did hide themselves in caves and thickets and rocks and high places and pits. And we'll go on. We'll probably read. We'll be reading more as we go. But to give you a background of the story, you know, Saul was actually, if you read the chapter 4, you hear how Saul was actually a, a good king. God chose him in the beginning. He was, he was humble. He, God said he was a goodly man. Actually, he, he was uh, over the whole tribe. He, he, he was very humble and he, he, he stuck out. And God saw him and chose him. In the first two years of his reign, he was a, he trusted in God. He depended on God. He was he was a good king. But notice in verse two and verse three and four, it was one of his first slippage that he had. You know, the Bible says, "And Jonathan spoke to Gareth and the Philistines." But what did he tell everybody in verse four? And all Israel heard say that Saul has smitten. He wanted everybody to hear about what he did, but he never he didn't do any work. So first thing he first thing you notice, a lot of things that happens is our sins is pride. And that the first slippage he had, he wanted everybody that he wanted to be, want everybody to give him praise. But in verse five, I want you if well if we read longer out the story, only two people had swords in the story. In verse four in chapter fourteen, only Jonathan and Saul had swords. They had everybody else had pitchforks. Um, they're going up against Israel. They're going up against the Philistines who had way more than them. The Bible says they had thirty thousand chariots. Um, they had 6,000 horsemen, people as a sandwich on the seashore. They had no chance of winning this war. The first signs of him, I want you to see him in patience is, you know, the hardest thing of patience is being overwhelmed. And I'm sure everybody can agree, when you're, first thing, when you get impatient, is when you're overwhelmed. Of, one of the things that hits us is when we're overwhelmed. We're hitting something that is, is so much on us, that we have so much on us, that we go, oh man, that's when we make our first mistake of not trusting God. We're, we're overwhelmed, and I, we've all we've all been there. We're we're overwhelmed. We have too much on us. We we try to put too much on ourselves. Look at verse six. And the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, and the people were distressed. I don't know. Another thing we can find ourselves in patience not when we're overwhelmed, but we're afraid. And I've made I don't know how many times I've made dumb decisions for those two things. I'm overwhelmed, or I'm afraid. See, it's amazing that the Lord. You don't. That we love reading the rest of the story, which we'll get to. We know the ending of the story, and we're oh yeah, I would never do that. Um, now I would, I would not be the one to do what Saul did as we read on, I, because we know what the ending. We know how bad it is. The ending of it. The point is, but what if if you put your self situation? We we don't always. We I love I love I read the Bible like this all the time. I like to read the Bible and make yourself feel good. Like, that was so stupid. How could he do that? No, no. We do that all the time. We just do it in different situations. The exact same things. Just different things. Different ways. And the Bible says, you know, he, they were, he was overwhelmed. There was way overmatch. They also had, they were also afraid. And when you're afraid is when, when, you, make, when you make actual mistakes. I've been in situations like this when I... Um, where I, I actually went another job. I had another job. I wanted it really bad. And the problem with, with patience is, is it's not in your timing. It's God's timing. And I, I waited. I was at a wicked job. I was afraid. I was, sorry, no, I was afraid and I was overwhelmed. Um, we had a, a company where I first got to college. And you, when you first get to college, you're all happy about it. You got your major. You feel good about yourself. I'm going to get a good job. It didn't happen. Um, it was four months. I had no job. As a guy... I'm sure y'all all understand that's the worst thing. No money. So, whew, you know, you're sitting around and you got to ask your parents for a couple of dollars. And I had, you know, I was, I was trying to teach Sun School class. Thank God you, you were in my Sun School class for, for six years ago. Didn't have anything really. But I, I didn't have a job. I had a, and I, I didn't want to go back to Ingalls. I was a little prideful, so that was, that was bad. But I waited, and then a guy gave me a job. And I did not know what was going on in that company. It was, uh, it was, it was a it was a new job. I was just happy to have a job, but when I started learning, they weren't paying people. And what do you think I was happy? I was I, I said, hey guys, y'all aren't paying these people that you owe them. Well, oh yeah, we will. Well, I waited. And I'm like, hey, I'm sending you what you should be paying them. They weren't doing it. They were ripping people off. They're cheaping it. And I and I'm right now. I was afraid. I was afraid. I need. I said, God, I gotta get out of here. I don't care what it is. I've got to get out. I was afraid. And when and God says, no, it's not going to happen when you want it. Now, did I, did I listen? No, I did not. I did look. I was going to interviews on my lunch breaks. I was trying to, I was looking very hard. I was trying to get out. And I did not care what it took. I was like, God, I, I had already planned my own plan B. I said, if God doesn't work, I got I to gotta get out of here some way. And see, when it happens to patience is when you're overwhelmed, 
and you're afraid, you're not going to trust in God. And that, that actually is not what God wants you to do. He wants you to trust him. And if you read in verse, verse 7, it says, Some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. You know, his pride was going away. People, he, he had no solution for him. They, and he, now, I'll tell you one thing that Saul did. In verse 8, he tarried seven days to the set time that Saul had appointed. But, Saul, but Samuel came not to Gilgad, and the people were scattering him. You know, Saul was probably a little bit better than we were. He, prob he was overwhelmed. He probably was afraid. People were afraid. But you know what? He actually waited to the time it comes. Some of us, we, haven't even got to ver we wouldn't have even gotten to verse 8. And I, would, I have to admit to myself, I'm, I don't think I would have gotten there. I have already would have made a decision. We're already planning plan Bs and Cs. We're not trusting God. And it, 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 that hurts God because he's like, you're not, you're not trusting me. You're not, you're not giving me time. It, because we have a set time. Now, in this situation, Samuel told Saul, I'm going to be there in seven days. He didn't show up. He didn't show up in seven days. Not exactly when he wanted him to show up in seven days, but he said, I need you to show up in seven days. See, we try to set time for God when we want things to happen. Like I have my job, I wanted to get out immediately. God, I need to get out right now. And you know what? God says, no, not yet, because I want you to meet somebody. Who was it? Well, my boss. Uh, I had a brand new boss who came in. I had another boss who did me wrong, who owed me. I, had, I was way up overdue for a raise that she promised me and then took credit for my work, which also made me mad. I was like, all right, now you're taking credit for all the work I did, and I deserved the raise. It didn't happen, but God brought a Christian in by who I really needed, who actually came to our Christmas play and her family, and actually, and my friend Harry. And I, we used to talk about God every day, and, it, and God brought me there to, to, to meet them at the end when I wanted to leave really bad, but I would have never met them if I would have left. And I was trying to, but God says, no, not yet. Not, not the time. Of course, when we pray, we, I tell you the easiest answers that we love is yes and no. Those are easy prayers. God, can I do this? Yes, thank you. We love that one. That's the easy one. Oh, yeah, they, and they answer fast. I had a job. The job after that, God answered it in, one, in less than two hours. I had another company I was at. I prayed to get out of there because I didn't like the company either. And, guys, and I had one day off. One. I applied for a job in two hours, and I got it. The one I'm at now currently, I got it in literally an hour. I don't know how they got my resume. It was God. The guy said, I'll get you out immediately. Sometimes we love those yes. We love those yes prayers. They're quick. Now, the no ones are hard. No ones, we, they don't, we don't want to hear it, but when they come quickly and God says no, it's, it's quick. But when the one that we hate the most is waiting, because they don't come in our time, and the guy didn't say no. He just said, your time, I'm not going in your set time. And see, Sam, Samuel um, saw here, he wanted God to come at a set time. God, you have to come right here and now. I need you to come. Look, look, people are trembling. I'm afraid. And when we're afraid, God says you're not, he wants you to trust. He wants you to be patient. And that's what I'm trying to teach you on being patient. So signs of impatience, you have, you're going to be overwhelmed. You'll be afraid. You may even pass those steps and you say, you know, I was patient. I was, I was overwhelmed. I am, I am fearful. But I did, I did pray. See, Saul, Saul did pray. He waited. Seven days, but he had a plan B. And the Bible says in Saul, verse 9, and Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering and a peace offering. He offered the burnt offering. It came to pass that as soon as he made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul says, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and thou camest not within the days appointed that the Philistines gathered themselves to, together and mishmash. Then said I, the Philistines will come down upon me, Gilgal, and I have, na I have not made supplication to the Lord. I forced myself and offered a bar for How many times have we sinned? So my second thing is the sin of impatience. You know, when we sin, you know, it's all about pride. It's always, it's always about us. Notice the Bible says, I, I, write, I underline that verse, uh, underline the key words, I forced myself. It's not, who knows how many times we have forced ourselves and gotten ourselves in trouble. We, we, we put ourselves, I have for, you forced yourself. You didn't wait. You got your own self in trouble. I, I was married, uh, we were talking to her about my investments. And I told you, and I said, you know, investing is great. My dad always talks about it. It's good, but it's discouraging too. My dad don't always give you the good side. You can't always look at your investments. Some days is up. Some days is down. Last year was a good year. 
everything was going pretty good around I'll tell y'all about October I was living high I was having a great I was like man the Lord's good uh, it, he was good the market was going really good and you think man what did you do stupid well I got impatient and when you start to make money you want to be like oh you should probably pull it out now it's in the market I, it wasn't mine but it was in the market and it had gone up 40 50k it was looking nice I was like, man God is good Man, I should pull this right now. And got a little greedy. And I said, you know what? Let's try to make some more. And you know what? When you keep looking at the market and you're always checking it, you have to not look at it. You can't look at it. You got to trust God. You got to put it away. You can't look at it. I kept looking and peeking. Oh, it's going to go down. Oh, it's going to go down. I got to pull it. I said, I wasn't praying. I was praying before. I was praying. But when things got rough and I waited, I was being impatient, kept looking, and I started pulling and started doing my own thing. And you know what happened? Lost it. Bam, it was going down. And because I kept losing, not being patient. And you know how many times I forced myself to do it? I didn't pray. I didn't trust God. I said, you know what? I, have, I see what's going to happen. And I, I thought I knew what was going to happen. You know, Saul, he thought he knew what was going to happen. Oh, I'm going to get killed. Yeah, this is, it's not happening. Um, God didn't come through. He, he's not coming through. I have my plan B. When you have plan B's and plan C's, you never trusted God's plan A. You never did. Now, only times I pray, that's why I love this story in the Bible, in, in Matthew, uh, we're not going to turn there, but the guy, the, the, his daughter, he wanted God to heal his daughter, but he said, God, help my unbelief. Sometimes you got to recognize, you got to let God know that you don't always, you're not always patient. And I have, times, I have to pray, and God said, God, help my unbelief. I think it's one of the greatest stories, because that's why God says, I love your faith, because he knew the guy didn't come pridefully. He knew that he had a problem. He said, God, I, don't, I struggle with my belief. I have, I do have struggle with patience. We you gotta let you gotta let God know that you don't have patience, and it's okay to admit that because that's why God's there to help you. He's giving you a roadmap which will hit the solutions to patience. I never want to leave anyone with bad news. We all know we have problems with patience. We know we struggle. Think about all the car wrecks that happen out of impatience. It happens all the time. You, this isn't just life with this Christian life. It also happens in car wrecks. We want to go somewhere, and we just go. I actually saw it literally happen on Sunday. I, I almost, I felt like about, to, I almost got hit. I, I had a green light. I was going through, but this car decided to be impatient. He had one of those yellow lights that were blinking, and he thought, "Oh, I can make it." He didn't see me. I was going right now. His green light. He had no right away, but he thought he could make it. And the Lord said, "You should slow down." And I, because usually, well, my parents always say, "Slow down by the lights." But we don't do that. We always speed up. So I was about to, I'm about to hit my, I was going, I was about to pick it up speed. And I was like, Lord, oh, slow down, slow down. Enough. That guy came out right out. He did not pay attention. Think of all the cars, people that die. See, you don't think about who gets hurt when you're impatient. Think about what else happened to Saul. The Bible says in verse 12, therefore said I, oh, I, was, I forced myself, therefore, an offer, burn offer. In verse 13, it says, and Sam, Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now will the Lord have established thy kingdom for Israel forever, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. You know, it wasn't, you know, when you're being self, when you're not being patient, you think the only person you're going to affect is yourself. Sometimes it's not just you. It's other people that get hurt by it. Think about all the families that have been shut down because some or couples that someone they couldn't wait for a mate. I know my mom my dad always trying to get a mate. It's not worth going in that fast. I have no I I'll, I'll wait. It's not worth it. They don't tell you all the hurt and pain. They jump into something they're not ready. I had and I don't know how many college friends I had that did that. They just got into one, they weren't ready, they didn't pray and they got into one and they got themselves hurt. Think of all the families I've got broken by that. You know, it's just it's a it's so easy to get ourselves in trouble by not being patient and getting we overwhelmed, we're afraid, or maybe we even prayed and waited, we weren't being patient. And God says, you're going to miss out on it. And most of the time, it's for, it's for our own self. And the Bible says, so no, for one, our pride gets in the way. You know, think about it, he said, I forced myself. Two, he says, you know, the Bible says, I'm taking your kingdom, I'm taking your kingdom away. His family could not even be kings anymore. So Jonathan could have been king next. God wanted. God had a plan. He wanted to establish Saul's family. He was humble. He did, but he got away from it. And now other people got affected by it. Blessings are missed when he did. He didn't, since he did not, all the blessing that God wanted to bless his family with, he lost it because he didn't trust God. See, we never see. Do you know that verse about? Well, go back to the verse um, in verse ten. And it came to pass as soon as he made an offering. 
you know how many times do you you feel how stupid it is when I mentioned the market you know the times I wasn't trusting guy and I pulled as soon as I pulled guess what happened that stock went up I said oh that was stupid I, I should have waited half a second we always say that I should have waited I just knew it I should have just stayed still but no I moved it and it's immediate, it's, it happens all the time because when we don't trust God and we as soon as we God says look what you missed out on you could have had all this but because you didn't trust me you, you're going to miss out, and not just you, your family can get hurt by it. And you, this, is not just, this is not just stories that we know, but the Bible gives you tons of stories of people that did not wait. They were impatient, and they lost a lot, and their families got hurt. So we see the signs of impatience. You see the sin of it. But now I'm going to give you the simple solution. Actually, before I go there, I want you to go to Isaiah 64, verse 2. And I love this verse because it's not only in Isaiah 64, verse 2, in case we only read the Old Testament. Guys said, okay, in case you don't read the Old Testament, you only read the Old Testament, I'm going to put the same verse in the New Testament. By the way, the same verse is in there in the New Testament, but he changes a couple words up. But the Bible says in Isaiah 64, <clears throat> let me make sure I wrote the right one. My bad, verse 4. And the Bible says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceive by ear, neither ha neither have the eyes seen, O God, besides the, that he have pre what he hath prepared for him that waited for him. You know, the God has so much he wants to give us in store for us, and he has prepared it for us, but the, you know, he, but we have to wait. And we have to be patient. And the Bible says, For since the beginning of the world have men have not heard nor perceived by ear, neither um, neither have the eyes seen. You know, you never know how much God wants to bless you, how much he, want, he has in store for you, but you have to be patient. You know, that's why the hardest thing is trials and tribulations. You know, we, no, we don't want to go through them. I would be, we'll be lying right now if anyone said they'd like to go through trials and tribulations with God. And the Bible says in, um, in Psalms, examine me and prove me. You know, that's one of the hardest prayers that David prayed. We, we, I read that verse, and I, sometimes I skim through, and I got to stop. Read that again. Examine me and prove me. Have any of us actually asked God to examine us and prove us? We don't want to pray that. Um, no, I, I'm like, God, I don't, I don't want you to prove me. But God has to do it. Because he says, you're, not, uh, you're missing something. Now, there's a lot of reasons why you can go through trials and tribulations. Sometimes God says, you don't, do you really love me? Do you really love me? Or do you, uh, that's what, think about what God asked Peter. Do you love me more than these? And you know, he was asking Peter, do you really love me, or do you, or what kind of love do you have for me? See, when trials come, we, God, sometimes God's trying to draw us closer. He sees something lacking in us. He sees that, he sees something that you're not fully there with me. I don't know how many times that God had to bring something to me, and he still has to do it. It's the molding, it's the making. We don't like the fire. When we love when it's done. We love when the pot is clean and done. It looks great. But what we don't like is the, what makes it. And God says, is, and when David says, examine me and prove me, this is sometimes God puts patience. He has to do that to us. He says, your patience is there. If, I gave, if God gave us everything we wanted immediately, we'll be spoiled brats. We would be. We would, oh, I prayed for it. God came immediately. And look, we love to tell everybody when God comes, but it, it's the waiting. And God says, we well, got to be patient. you got to wait because you never know what God has for you if you wait. But it's not easy. The fire hurts. The patience of waiting is horrible. It's not easy. It's not easy. But God gives you a way how you can wait. Go to my last thing is solutions, and what we done it says in, um, go to Psalms four, and in, and when these two verses, God gives you the formula how to have patience. It's just as simple. And when you do it, and I have I tried to I I've been, it's something I have to work with every day because I don't always do it. But in Psalms four. Verse 4, I mean, 3 through 5 is your formula. How to, if you want to, uh, for me, I'm always saying formulas because I love math. And I like it simple and clear, but God puts it that clear for us. How you can, what you need to do when you pray, and when you're going through impatience, this, this is what you have to do. Just as simple. If you follow these, you'll, you know what God has for you. The Bible says, But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. For the Lord will hear when I call unto him. The Bible says, number one, stand in awe. And sin not. Have, you know what stand all means to have and sin not? God wants you to already believe in him. Already. Uh, talk about what he's going to do for you. You may, well, God, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. You pray for something. You don't, you don't see it. Talk about it. Stand in all. God wants you to be amazed with something he didn't even do yet. 
Notice it says sin not. That's what we just read. Force, don't force yourself. That means no plan Bs. That means he wants you to stand in all, step back and say, wow, I already, I already know God's going to do this. He wants you to already have that belief in him. He wants you to trust him. And he does not want you to force himself. You know, um, y'all don't have to turn the page, but in Isaiah, I'm just going to go back and read it to you. It's a perfect example of what standing in all looks like. And I, I love this verse because um, in Isaiah 54, verses 1 and 2, it says, Sing, O barren, thou that does not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that does not travail with child, for more are... For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the merry wives of the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cord, stretch, stretch, strengthen thy stakes. What, he, what he God is saying is this. He says, for the people that don't have any kids, go ahead and start making houses. Make them wider. What is that? that is, that's faith. That's what, that's what the verse is saying. It's saying is don't, don't. Is, is doing standing in awe. It's not sitting there and, what, oh, I don't know. Can we get a plan B plan? Go ahead and show God your faith. And I, that, that one's hard because I'm like, wow, if you don't have any kids, why would you go build another house? Why be, that's just length in your course. Do more, show God that you believe in because that's what God does the most. The Bible says, um, verse 4, what's going on? It says, commune with your own heart upon your bed. You, what does this mean? Is it when you when you're going out by faith? It's not always easy. So God already He already knows. He says you're gonna to have to have conversation with yourself. What is the conversation you get to have with yourself? The promises of God. When you're so, what did God give us? Well, He gave you two things. If you're like me, we like to be visual. Some of y'all like visual, and some of y'all like to read it. Now I don't know. Um, I think my brother in training. Some people I've noticed when I had to train people, some people were better with visuals. And I'm like, they couldn't, they could not, if I told them I can explain as detail as I want, they couldn't get it. Some of them did, they wanted to hear it from you. I like me, I want to hear the whys, I want to read it. I want to, so God says, all right, I'll give it to you both. Your visual is look at Christ's life. We can go through every one of these impatience that he, you're like, oh, God didn't experience that. Yes, he did, but he did not sin, though. And the difference is, and he also gave you the words. So when you're, when you're overwhelmed, what does God want you to do? Go to the rock. God says, cast your cares by him, for he cares for you. He already gave you that. When you're overwhelmed, I'm here. You can cast your burdens upon me. You're like, how was God? Where's my visual? God, when he was, when he was in the um, garden, what was he sweating? He was sweating drops of blood. He was overwhelmed. What, who came and given, who gave him strength? The Bible says the angel came and touched him and strengthened him. So, oh, there's your visual and there's your answer. You know who to go to when you're overwhelmed. You got to cast to him. That's what communing on your bed means. You're not, it's, even when you trust God and you're going out by faith, you're still going to be thinking about it. You're still going to be like, man, is this really going to happen? That's when you say, okay, let me give it, let me, let me remind myself, cast this upon God, give it to God. What's the next thing? Well, when you're afraid. Well, the Bible says, when you're afraid, trust in him. They, we have that. And that's what God wants to, he, he gives you scriptures to remind us, when you're afraid, just trust in him. And wait on it. So that's what God says when he says commune with your own heart on your, on your bed. And Bob says, and be still. Relax. It's going to be okay. Because God will come through. There's, and, there's your, and, there's your, and then verse 5, offer the sacrifices of righteousness. That's, keep going on. Do more for God. Do, don't just sit still. Do, you can do more. He'd be still, but you can also offer your, keep giving more to God because God loves that. If you do this, God, that's how, if that is your formula for patience, you have your visual. He's giving you, he's giving you comfort words when you're overwhelmed and when you're afraid, when you're waiting and it's not came through yet. He's giving, he knows that. He, he's been through it. So we forget that God lived the Christian life. He, he, he was here and he went through everything that we went through. Yes, he was, when he was reviled, he did not respond. He didn't, he, he didn't, he he hung strong. He was in, He was overwhelmed. He had a lot on him. All over, he was overwhelmed because of us. And you know, because of our sins that we laid on his back. But you know what? He, he, gave, us, he gave us a perfect map to how to do it. So when, you, when you're going through impatience and you, you experience, you're overwhelmed, you're afraid. Maybe you even prayed and you gave it all to God. And you said, God, I did put it in your hands. And you haven't came through. I needed to come now. What just happened? Who knows how many times in my life? I, I'm like, God, it hasn't came through yet. And what does God says? It's okay. Sit still. Stand in awe. Go ahead and show God your faith. Sin not. Don't force yourself to do your plan B and plan C. Stand still. 
and commune with yourself upon your bed. Remind yourself of the promises of God. They can, that's one thing we can always trust in. People lie to you. They'll tell you things. They're not going to come through. They, 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 you will have all the time. The Bible says, commune your, with your own self upon your bed. Remind yourself of what God's done for you. Remind yourself of what, what God told you. And then he says, be still. Relax. And do more for God. That's the verse 5. We forget. Offer sacrifice righteousness. Do more. Show God that you're, show God your faith. He loves that. And when you do that, that will help you with impatience. Of course, you know, no one's perfect. You know, I'm not, that's why I love, um, I, when I preach, I, or, or teach, whatever you want to say, I try to, I, I know that I struggle with it more than you do. It's something, patience does not come easy. It's happy. God tests it immediately. But pray, examine me and prove me. Like, like, like David said, he said, David said, examine me, prove me. That's not an easy prayer, but when you do that, God says he will, he'll draw you close to him. And that's why he does bring us through tough times. Because he does see something we like, and he wants to, he has to give us, get us closer to him. So we'll pray and we'll, we'll be done. So thank you guys so much for <clears throat> this Wednesday night service, Lord. Thank you, God, for um, your wonderful words and what you're trying to teach us through your word, Lord. Yes, Lord, we struggle. Yes, Lord, I struggle. This is not something that we can, con we can conquer on our own. And when we do, that's when we get ourselves in trouble and we try to. God, please teach us to, to, be, to be patient and to trust in you. If anyone wants to come and you want to say um, prayer, I'll come, with, I'll come and pray. You can, you're free to come up, and um, we'll be dismissed afterwards.